It's ready. Okay. I'm setting up the mics now. And good to see you on um, the YouTube as soon as we can. Yeah, you might want to move up there, can't see behind you, they're going to be oh, straight. Let's go see. this way. Well, uh, let me sit down. Behind. No, let me sit oh, down. That's right, well, the other side. Sit down, that way they can see. Uh-huh. Okay. They can see better. Oh, that's a one right here. Yeah. Did you meet the new representative of committee uh, person? She should be here. I talked to her yesterday. Right. Here, yeah, she called me and she told me she would meet me now. I don't know what she looked like, so hopefully. Right, I'll see her in the future. She told me I brought her the job description so she could see. John Tort, her children in the college. Right, and she was trying to say, she was asking me that I could Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. My name is John Lolly, and I'd like to thank everybody for coming out today. And I had the pleasure of introducing my friend, my All mentor, right. John Linder. Hey. Oh. Hey. And I have the pleasure of going behind my friend, <laughs> John Lolly. Um, thank you all for coming out today. Um, it's very important that you come out today and also on November the 2nd. And with that, um, my, my responsibility is to introduce someone who we all know who has always in his 18 years of public service at the state tried to bring us the best. And he has brought us someone today that we, can, we will be able to remember after this election and be able to make a call to the governor's office and have a friend there. So I'm going to let him tell you who that friend is, but it's my pleasure to introduce my friend and someone we all know, State Representative Thaddeus Kirkland. One of the things I heard, thank you so very much, uh, Councilman Linder, and thank you, John Lolly. Uh, one of the things that I used to hear on the, on the campaign trail a couple years ago when uh, we had uh, then Senator, now President Barack Obama, a, 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 a phrase he used to get the folks fired, to get the folks ready. He would say, someone would say, fired up, ready and the crowd go. would say, fired up, ready to go, fired up, ready to go, fired up, ready to go. We're fired up and ready to go. It gives me great pleasure. I'm excited about November 2nd. I'm excited about November 2nd. But, you know, we can be fired up and ready to go all we want. If, I, if the folks don't come out and vote, That's right. if the folks don't come out and vote, and then if they don't come out and vote Democrat, and they don't come out and vote for Dan Honorado for governor, then we are in serious, serious trouble. If you value education throughout the state of Pennsylvania, you need to make sure that you, not only yourself, comes out to vote, but you bring a friend, another friend, even bring a couple of enemies yeah. to vote for Dan Adorado. Right. If you're serious about turning the economy around and, and, and jobs in our community and throughout Pennsylvania, then you need to bring yourself, a friend, another friend, and an enemy and come out and vote for Dan Adorado. If you're right. serious about, you see what's going on with our president, you see the haters, you see the, 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 the tea parties and the party of no, doing everything they can to discredit and destroy the President of the United States, which means if they're trying to make him fail, which means we fail. Right. But if we have a governor by the name of Dan Adorado in the governor's seat in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, that Dan Adorado, that governor, will be fighting on behalf and for the President of these United States, President Barack Obama. Yeah. And so today, today in little old Chester, the Chester's the, the city, the first city right. in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Right. Yeah. The city of winners. Yes. Yeah. Today we have a winner. Yes. In the form and in the in the name of Dan Adorado. 
I want y'all to give him a good old Chester welcome. Woo! Put your hands Woo! together for the next one. Representative, Councilman, John, thank you. I, I appreciate their support and their help, and they've been with me for a long time. A long time. When I, I entered this race over a year ago, probably two years ago, and before I won the primary, when no one knew who I was in the eastern part of the state, but they're getting to know us real now, real, really well now, and they even know how to say my name, right? Right. Honorado. Honorado. Oh. Well, I'm here because it's five weeks away from this election. That's right. And you know, this is about me and Tom Corbett, this race, and where the two of us stand on the key issues of the day. And where are we going to take the Commonwealth? His view versus my view. Because his view, they want us to forget what President Bush did and gave us the worst economy yep. in the last 70 years since the Great Depression. Yep. They want, to, want us to forget that, that somehow they had nothing to do with it. But I'm going to tell you specifics, differences between me and Tom Corbett, because this is where it affects our lives. I mean, I come out of the city of Pittsburgh. I'm a city kid. I still live on the north side of the city where I was born and raised. I was a councilman. I was the controller. And now I'm the county executive of a county of 1.2 million people. A little smaller than Philadelphia. Why is that important? Because I understand education. And in my platform, we're going to, cons we're going to find a way to fund the costing out formula for education. You know why? Because over the last 30 years, the state used to fund public education at 50% of the budget. It's now down to about 34. That's right. And when they lower it, you know what happens? They shift the burden to the local school boards, That's and they raise property taxes. Right. And depending on your tax base, the disparities go through the roof. Yes. That's what happens. My opponent, cut, cut, cut is his decision. But there's something else in education that I've learned and watched as elected official, and I've embraced because I believe it's the most important program we have, and that's early childhood. Pre-kindergarten yes. programs. We need to get yes. kids in the school system before kindergarten. We're losing kids by third grade yes. because we don't do the right thing. Right. And sooner or later, this country and this state's going to figure this out, that we're much better off with our tax dollars if we invest in the front end, pre-kindergarten, as opposed to dealing with these kids when they're 17 and 18 by building jails. Yes. Let's get them on the front end so we educate them yes. and that they become productive citizens. It's a better investment of our tax dollars if we do this right. I've laid out a plan from pre-K through 12 to higher ed, attacking dropout rates, intervening before we get to those numbers, and more importantly, helping the kids that already dropped out. Yeah. This is about the economy and about jobs and putting people back to work. I run the second largest county in Pennsylvania. We're not immune to what's happening out there, but you know what? The unemployment rate in my county is still well below the federal number and well below the state number. We've got a well-balanced economy. We've got people back to work, and we're focusing on those things. But what you're going to find out in the next five weeks, the two of us are going to, I'm sure, talk about each other. It's going to come out. But I want to know. I want you to know something about my record versus his. I've governed for seven years in my county. I've never. We haven't raised property taxes in nine years. We froze assessments on homes for nine years. I balanced seven budgets. We shrunk the size of government because we had to. It's more efficient. We consolidated elected offices. We invested in old industrial sites. And by the way, driving through Chester today, if I'm governor, I saw a lot of old manufacturing sites that we're going to get shoveled ready for jobs in this community. That's what we need to be doing. As opposed to my opponent, who wants to say that he's going to sign a no-tax pledge, and he changed the definition of it three times in the last two weeks. And then he says that he's going to cut everything. But you know what the reality is? He also got a track record. When he was a local elected official and he had a chance to be efficient, he didn't look at the expenditures. He voted to raise property taxes 20%. That was his answer. I was a councilman for eight years, county executive for seven, never raised property taxes because people were hurting. And I knew that. We found a way to run government by holding the line on taxes. He had one chance, he raised them 20%. He says if he's governor, he's going to cut state government. Yet every single year he asked for an increase in his budget as the attorney general. He says if he's governor, he's going to cut the cars, the number of fleets that we have in the state. Yet as attorney general, his fleet's up 5%. You know, you can't say one thing and then do another. People are going to ultimately look at your record. So I've talked to talk, but I've also walked the walk for a long time. He's been talking the talk. He has never walked the walk on these issues. 
the next governor is going to have a tough situation. We're going to have to prioritize what we spend. We're going to figure out what we don't spend on. Education, we're going to make sure we do it right. We're going to make sure we have early childhood programs. We're going to make sure we invest in old industrial sites and bring jobs back to the neighborhoods and make sure that we build things again in this country. And we train our people for the jobs of the future. But there's one big difference, too, in this race between the two of us, and I think it's critical. We have an opportunity in the state with the natural gas fine that's going on. It's Marcellus Shale. Yes. The two of us couldn't be more different on this issue. You know, I'm prepared to put a competitive severance tax in place to do three things. We're going to fund the Department of Environmental Protection because it took a 28% cut last year. Right. We can't be drilling throughout the Commonwealth and, have, and not have a DEP. You want to watch your water? You want to make sure your environment's cleaned? Well, then we got to do it the right way. That means we could have the industry pay their fair share, like every other state that has gas makes them do. My opponent, no tax, let him self-regulate. If there's an environmental problem, you pay for it, the taxpayers, not this time. The other thing we're going to fund is an impact fund. Councilman, this is for you. This is money set aside for municipalities. You know the wear and tear on the roads, the water lines, the sewer lines from this industry? Well, they're going to pay for it. They're going to help pay for that. Effort. Not us. You shouldn't have to pay for that. They're making millions on this industry. We're going to have them pay for it. And three, we're going to do a Grow and Greener Fund so we can preserve farmland, preserve open space, and clean up brownfields that we just talked about. Well, my opponent has taken close to $900,000 from the, the gas and drilling industry. And his ideas are no tax, no regulations, let them do what they want. I'm not running for governor for the gas companies. I'm running to represent 12 million people in Pennsylvania oh, so we do this right. Yeah. And there's one other thing in the gas company. Marcellus Shell, Penn State just did a study. They're projecting 80,000 new jobs in the next 18 months. 80,000! When I'm your governor, we're going to give them permits to drill. But there's going to be an understanding. Before they start drilling everywhere, they're going to hire Pennsylvanians, not Louisiana, right. not Texas, not right. all our people. And we're going to go back to work, just like the, the uh, Pennsylvania Technical College in Williamsport, where they're training from an eight-week program to a four-year degree program to place people in the Marcellus Shell. We should have training right here in this county, right here in this city with community colleges, both tech schools. If there's 80,000 jobs, how many people in this tent would like to have some of those jobs if we're giving them out, right? Right, we're going we're gonna to be bearing the burden on the environmental side. We're going to see the infrastructure. Why don't we get the jobs out of the industry at least? That's the least we can do. And you know what? They'll give us the jobs. All they care about is the right to drill. They want to get the gas out of the ground. We'll train. We'll train them for as many jobs as they need. There's no reason why Pennsylvanians aren't getting those jobs. And we're going to make sure that happens. But I'm going to end with this. Because this race is going to be so tight. Six days ago, I was at a picnic with a thousand people in Wilkesbury, Pennsylvania. At the Catholic War Vets. It was a tent like this and a big pavilion. That day on the front page of the paper, they called the Times Leader, they did their own poll. It had Corbett 38, Honorado 37, 25 undecided, with a margin of error of 4%. So basically a tied race. That was Sunday, six days ago. 48 hours later, another poll had me down 15. 12 hours later, I was back down to 6. 8 hours later, I was back to 8, depending on what polls you look at. You know what the difference is? They're all trying to guess turnout. I, I get the national mood. I know, I know where it is, but we also know where the, the registration edge is. This race is going to come down to who runs the best race and who gets their vote out. And here's what I like to remind people. It's going to be a slugfest. But on November 3rd, the day after the election, when we wake up and I win by two, three, four, five percentage points instead of 20 points from four years ago, guess what? They still call you governor. They still call you governor. And it's going to be places like Chester, Philadelphia, and other big cities, small cities, boroughs, townships, where this comes up because they're going to ultimately know both of us, Tom Corbett and me, where we stand on these issues. And it is like night and day. I don't want to go back to the Bush and Republican policies of two years. I don't want to do it. I'm not doing it. We're not going to let that happen. we got to make sure we invest in people, we invest in old industrial sites, and we get our people back to work.